The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. America's infrastructure is in an extraordinarily sad state of disrepair, uh, in fact, endangering and killing Americans. Uh, we need a new attitude in terms of rebuilding our infrastructure, bringing it up to a state of good repair at the White House. There seems to be some reluctance. The president said after his job summit that he just had to admit that shovel ready wasn't always shovel ready, and he seemed to be referring to infrastructure. But actually, the infrastructure money is already 60% spent and underway and be obligated before spring to begin to catch up with that deficit. Now, the Department of Energy has only spent about 8% of their money. HUD, I don't know if they've spent any of it. There's all sorts of fantasy programs out there that were in the stimulus where money hasn't been expended. But in transportation and infrastructure, it has been invested and it's going to save lives and it's going to get people uh, to work uh, with less congestion, less damage to their vehicles by bringing the infrastructure up to date. I'd like to try and bring this home to the White House because they just don't seem to be listening. This was or is a lag bolt. It's about 60 years old. Uh, you can see it's kind of like missing the bottom. Well, this lag bolt was involved in an accident on the Chicago Transit Authority. This is what holds down the metal plates that hold down the rail. They have a lifespan of about 40 years. There are thousands of them on the system waiting to fail. Now, when the Chicago Transit Authority got $250 million, that's a lot of money under the stimulus bill, they spent the money in 30 days. 30 days. Now, these aren't just your old public works construction jobs. These are, first off, almost all private sector jobs, bid out on contract. Secondly, much of it was invested in sophisticated equipment and manufactured goods. So that money, that $250 million, produced a huge multiplier effect. People, they were buying new buses because their buses are decrepit. People who build buses, you know, we're getting good wages. The people who build things to go on buses, tires, you know, brakes, all that, because of Made in America, they were getting jobs too. So actually, the shovel-ready stuff was ready and is underway when it comes to transit and highway and bridge infrastructure. Like this failed bolt in Chicago, the Chicago Transit Authority could spend another six and a half billion dollars just to bring their system up to a state of good repair and they can spend that money very quickly with a huge multiplier effect. Why can't the economic team at the White House understand that? Their pointy head theories about, oh, infrastructure takes so long and it doesn't have a good multiplier, unlike giving people a little bit of money and withholding or, you know, or, or green grid, whatever that is, where a penny hasn't been spent. They can't somehow, this is just too old school for them, fixing up our country, putting people to work, manufacturing and construction jobs. We have 160,000 bridges, 160,000 bridges on the federal system that should be posted. The American people should see a big sign saying, danger, the bridge over which you are about to drive is either weight limited, structurally deficient, or functionally obsolete. 160,000 bridges. Now, if we began a program to replace those, it doesn't take long. Look how quickly we replaced the bridge in Minnesota. It doesn't require lengthy environmental impact statements or planning. It's replace and fix the bridges. It's concrete, it's steel, it's workers, it's aggregate. It's made in America. You can't export those jobs. But somehow, the people on the president's economic team don't get that, or maybe in the, from the backseat of their limousines, they can't see that the bridges and the infrastructure are deteriorated, and they sure as heck aren't on the creaky public transit systems that are falling apart and here in D.C. killing people because the infrastructure is so outmoded and so substandard. It is embarrassing for the greatest nation on earth to be devolving toward a fourth world infrastructure. We're not even third world. We're investing less of our GDP in our infrastructure than our many third world countries. We are formerly first world, formerly world leader. Now we're watching our competitors around the world vault ahead of us with high speed rail, with modern transit, with beautiful new highways, with safe and bridges that are designed to current standards. But no, we can't afford it. And even if we could afford it, like taking some of that unspent TARP money or maybe some of the other unspent stimulus money, they don't want to do it downtown. It's time for a new attitude downtown. Don't jeopardize the people of America with this kind of outmoded infrastructure anymore. Get it, guys. This means jobs, and it's something the American people believe in.